Best of R slash Entitled Parents Episode 47. First post here BTW. All names and school name are disclosed for obvious reasons. So as you'd expect EK is the entitled kids. EM is the mum. Me is well me. T is the teacher. M is my mum and F1 and F2 are my friends. As a 13 year old I've seen many naughty kids, but none as bad as this. Even though I'm English I do usually make many mistakes when typing on my phone so if I do make one sorry. So it all started off when EK was already being naughty in class shouting out loud. The teacher told him off and you could tell EK was angry. But what happened next was a lot worse than before. EK decided to storm out of class throwing a chair at F1 before he left. I ran towards my friend and I saw her nose bleeding. Later on that day I was called to the teacher's office with F1 and F2 who was sitting right next to F1 at the time of the incident. When we entered we saw EK, T, and EM, who was looking at her phone. A conversation then began. T, so EM your son as I told you earlier thought it would be a good idea to throw a chair at F1 in class today. EM, I don't believe that my EK could do such a thing. He's sweet and sound. Anyways I don't see no proof. Me, how can you say sweet and sound this kid is disrupting every lesson? F2, and can you not see the bruises that your brat has left on F1? I could tell F2 was mad so I encouraged him to calm down. F1 wasn't talking. Instead he was trying to cover up his crying. EM, look at how fake his crying is. He'll get a job as a footballer. Not sure if American soccer players do this but English footballers always fake themselves getting hurt. When he's older, F1 finally spoke. If it's fake why don't your son say it in front of all our faces? EK, um um, EM, he don't need to do anything you say you little bitches. You need to grow up and get a life. T, sorry mom but if that's how you're gonna talk to the innocent students I'm afraid you'll have to leave. All of a sudden my mom walked in. I had called her earlier to make sure she knew but I didn't think she'd come in person. EM, and who may you be? M, me's, mother. And I've heard everything you've said for the last 5 minutes I've been standing right outside and how dare you call my son and his friends a liar. Every other day after school he's told me about how annoying your child is and how he should just leave. Your son clearly hurt this kid and you cannot justify yourself and your entitled ways. Yes she actually called her entitled. EM looked so shocked and realized she had no reason to try and argue anymore. Whilst EK just looked horribly embarrassed. She left with EK saying that she's gonna leave a one star review on the school's webpage. We all ignored her and we all decided to go home. The EK never came back to the school again and I was just laughing with my friends the next day. It was just a couple weeks ago so I'm not sure if EK will end up coming back but I do know if he does there will be more drama. And I'll happily update you on it. Thank you. Next. Okay, I am a long time creeper and my brother told me this story that would fit perfectly here. Also normal stuff, English isn't my first language so pardon terrible grammar. Okay so a little backstory is we live in a very rural area, and my brother attends a smaller high school type place for people who need some credit recovery, so of course there are going to be some brats that go there. So on to the story. There is a kid, let's call him NK for short. He always talks about the fact that his mom lets him drive himself along with a few of his friends to school even though he doesn't have a license or isn't even old enough to have one. He is 15 and in my country you must be 16 to take your test. One of the teachers overheard him doing this all the time so decided to call the police. Along with NK mother. Apparently the police arrived before the mother and NK was extremely nervous. Telling them that he thought he was allowed because his mom let him. They started to explain to him the dangers of doing so, but then saunters EM, angry as if they had murdered her son. P.O. Police officer, dialogue is what I was told. So summed up. EM what are you doing? Don't touch my son. P.O. We were called here on a report that your underage son is driving without a permit or license. EM yes, I let him. P.O. Why? Do you understand how dangerous that is? Plus he had children in the car. EM I know, those are his friends. I let him because he is a very good driver so it's fine. PO no, it's not fine. If he keeps doing it then he is going to have to come with us to file a report. NK mom, it's fine. I can get someone else to drive me. EM no it's not fine. You can drive yourself. He is not going to stop driving. 
I am his mother and I said it's okay so it's okay. P.O. well. I am sorry but we are going to have to take him in. And just like that, she got her kid arrested right in the middle of class. Apparently he just got a fine and some community service work, but wow. Some people. Thank you. Next. This happened a couple months back, around October time when I had my first parents evening in college. My mom was with me, and we got to my meeting about half an hour early, so we decided to get some food in the cafe while we wait. There was no queue so we took the opportunity while it was there. I get a Sunday dinner sandwich, turkey, stuffing and cranberry sauce, while my mom just has a coffee. We find a couple seats right next to our meeting, and I start to eat my sandwich. Halfway through my second slice, when the sudden realization kicks in, oh fuck, my mom's gonna know how bad I'm doing in college, I could lose a lot of shit for this, and she is going to lose hers, apostrophe, I can't let her know I'm scared, because she'll know something is up, she does know that occasionally I bounce my leg, but doesn't know why, so I take advantage of that, so naturally I start shaking, she gives me a slight look then rolls her eyes, and goes back to drinking her coffee. This catches the attention of a random dad, who also doesn't seem to know why people bounce their leg either, and he comes up and sits next to me. We're both silent for a few seconds, until I muster up the courage to say hi in a friendly tone. The dad doesn't even say hi back, he just tells me to stop shaking your leg. It's very distracting, and frankly quite annoying. I just say oh sorry and try and stop. But my sort of fight or flight response is still going, so I can only stop for a couple seconds. There you go again, purposely being annoying. I try to explain that it's not something I can really control, and this son of a bitch literally screams at me, saying you kids are the whole reason we're fucked and you only care about yourselves. Shit like that, for about 15 minutes. I stay silent for the rest of the wait, but other people try and reason with ED, and told him that their children do the same thing, and it's because of anxiety, and all the other parents and students tell me it's okay, everyone gets anxiety at these sorts of things, just get the meeting over with, and you won't have to do this again in the least condescending tone I've heard compared to every boomer I've encountered. Dad then goes back to his own seat, and I see he's with the quietest kid in the class ironic. Finally, around 15 minutes of this dad yelling at me for having anxiety, there's a free spot at my tutor's table. So naturally, get up to get the meeting done but just like Brexit, there's always something else in the way. Three guesses at who takes my spot. You guessed it, or read the title, the fucking dad, that yelled at me for having anxiety, and heard everyone tell me get the meeting done, took my spot with a shit eating grin on his wrinkly ass face and gave me a little wink, and this fucker takes his time, asking the stupidest questions just to waste time. I know for a fact these meetings are supposed to take 5-10 minutes, but this guy takes half an hour, more time than he spent yelling at me, just asking stupid questions about food prices and does he get homework. He leaves, with the same wrinkly ass, shit eating grin on his face, and I finally get my meeting done, it turned out my anxiety triggered for no reason because I'm actually doing pretty well, and got a green in every aspect of the project we had done up to that point. He finishes off the meeting by telling me don't worry, his son only has ambers and reds, you're doing way better than him anyway, and I just say really? Oh then say bye, and go. Me and my mom get back to the car, and she pops out there and then with OP, do you want to go for a checkup while we're already out? or leave it for another time I just go with another time, because I literally just wanna go home at that point. My mom is a pretty big procrastinator, and we're only just going for that checkup at the end of Jan. Wish me luck. TLDR. I get anxiety from a meeting with my tutor, a dad yells at me for shaking my leg, and smugly steals my time slot. Thank you. Next. Note. I have posted on this subreddit before and my last post did pretty well so it's time to share another story. Context. I recently moved into a pretty nice neighborhood due to my new job as well as so I could be closer to my family so this area teemed with incredibly arrogant and bitchy people. I also recently got a Tesla Model 3 which was a giant upgrade from my 2010 Nissan. Now Teslas in this area was pretty rare, so when people looked or commented at mine, I didn't think much of it. Now the story begins. EM entitled mom. Kid her kid. Me me. 
One day, I made a quick trip to Julasco for some groceries. When I was done, I went into the parking lot and saw a kid looking at my car. I approached him and said, Me you like the car? Kid yeah I love Teslas. Is this extended or standard range? Me standard. Kid cool. We talked for a little bit, and then in a flash, the EM approached me and her son. EM why are you talking to my baby? Your son was looking at my car and said it was cool so we just talked about it. Kid mom it's fee. EM you have no right to talk to my son. Kid's name. Let's go. BTW that probably isn't your car. You're probably just a spoiled kid WHO has rich parents. M23 which is young but whatever. Me actually this is my own car. Which I did buy with my own money. But okay. EM no you didn't. Give Emmy your keys you don't deserve this. Me Teslas don't have keys. Can you please leave me alone? EM listen here. I know this isn't your car. I know you stole this. Give Emmy the key so I can give IT back to the police. Me no. Can you please fuck off lady? EM that's IT you little shit I am calling the cops. About 5 minutes later a police officer shows up. Officer okay what seems to be the problem? EM this little bitch stole my car and I followed him here to take IT back. Me what? No officer this lady has been harassing me for the past 10 minutes and she is now claiming that this car is in fact hers. Officer to the kid's son, is she telling the truth? Kid no, mom can we go now you're taking this too far. Officer to me can you show me some registration? Me sure, I then unlocked my car, took the registration out of the glove box, and showed it to the officer. Officer everything checks out, no problem here you can carry on with your day. Me thanks. EM that registration is fake officer this is my car. Officer no it's not, please leave this man alone. I quickly went in my car, and left, screaming EM still yelling at the officer and the kid still trying to calm here down. TLDR screaming lady goes from yelling at me for talking to her son, to claiming my car is hers. Edit. Thanks for the upvotes and if you're wondering about my posts on r slash teenagers, my brother uses this account because karma. Thank you. Next. Cast EM. Entitled Mommy K. Entitled Kid Me. Me Popo. Police. Background. I have a nice expensive dog that is Australian Shepherd and a great Perry nice mix. He is worth at least $1000 but I would never sell him I just went through a breakup and he was helping me through it. He also got hit by a car and was seriously injured. I was walking Magnus, dog, in the park and all of a sudden EK approached me and asked to pet my dog oh I said yes and he started petting eventually he started petting him where he got run over and it caused him pain. I asked EK to stop and he ran off. I thought that was the end of that but 5 minutes later EK came back with EM. EM, excuse me, me, yes, EM, why can't my son pet your dog? Me, miss my dog got run over and EK was hurting my doggo. EK, I bet he isn't run over he's still alive isn't he? EM, I'm calling the cops and reporting you for animal abuse if you don't give me that doggo RN. Me, call the cops see what I care they will let me go. My GFS dad is the chief of police and has walked with me and my dog on several occasions and knows I would never mistreat him. EM, dashes forward and tries to grab his leash. Give me that. My dog is trained to defend me and as she lunges forward he jumps up and bites her. EM. Oh it bit me I'm calling the cops. 10 minutes later the cop arrives. Popo. What's going on here? EM. He stole a dog and abused it so it bit me. Me. I did not such thing this is my good dog it's trained to protect me. A lot of dialogue happened but I don't remember and it's not important. The officer takes us in where my GF dad hears what happened and proves my innocence. EM and EK had to to community service for IDK how long and I don't care. I would have laughed about it but this is happening a lot like to a week I'll share more but this was definitely the worse. Sorry if there are any errors I'm on mobile and this is my second post please tell me how it was. Thank you. Next. This woman is a litigation lawyer and makes big bucks. But she wants to cut back her hours so she can spend more time with her husband and kids. She's obviously going to make less money. However. Her family has helped her husband's parents financially when things were tight, paid for a few vacations, and are funding their niece's pricey preschool. And these people don't take the news well. HTTPS, slash slash www, Washington Post.
com slash lifestyle slash advice slash carolyn hacks your in-laws have been sponges and now fierce our sponges slash 2020 slash 01 slash 06 slash b6211456 dash 2e58 dash 11ea9 b60 dash 817 cc18 cf 173 story html thank you next I am perhaps fortunate that in my line of work I rarely encounter entitled parents, but reading these stories has reminded me of an incident that took place many years ago. I was working for a small dance and theatre production company in the 70s. One day, the boss decided we needed to clean our dance floor, essentially half a dozen rolls of very heavy duty black lino. We did a lot of work with ballet companies and consequently the flooring got covered in dancers rosin. A rather sticky powder like substance that ballet dancers use on their dance shoes for grip, which needed cleaning down periodically. The quickest way we found to do this was to haul the whole shebang down to the local foreshore along the Thames, roll it out into the water and then give it a good going over with a stiff, bristled broom. Worked a treat and would only take 20 minutes. On this day, it was extremely cold, so I elected to get into my wetsuit as I'd have to walk one end of the roll out into the river and I didn't fancy freezing my butt off standing around in old father Thames. As I walked out the third roll, I felt a rather odd sensation in my right foot. Something was clearly off so I walked back up onto the foreshore. It felt like the ball of my foot was flapping about as if it had somehow been disconnected from the rest of my foot. Stepping out of the water I saw that my foot was bleeding like a stuck pig. I had apparently trodden on a large piece of broken glass that had sliced right through my plimsolls and straight into my foot. Aghast, my boss rapidly wrangled the floor section we'd been cleaning into the van and we head off post haste for the nearest A&E. Accident and emergency. Ten minutes later, I'm sat on a chair in the very busy waiting room, still in my wetsuit, with a sweatshirt tightly wrapped around my foot while the boss checks me in. I'm still losing blood like it's going out of fashion. Obviously I've sliced into some major blood vessels, and there's a pool of blood accumulating on the floor despite the temporary bandage. As you might imagine, I'm also starting to feel rather faint and very out of sorts. It was at this juncture that the Karen manifested in all her glory, sat almost opposite was, as I have subsequently discovered, a stereotypical Karen sporting a coiffure of indeterminate provenance and an expression like she'd consumed enough lemons to populate the glasses of every single gin and tonic drinker in the country, sat with her was glum looking 9 year old, excuse me, would you mind not bleeding all over the floor in front of my son, it's making him feel sick, seriously, despite my weakened state, I felt affronted, what would you like me to do, go and find needle and thread and sew it up myself? Remarkably, the lemon-sucking expression intensified. Why don't you sit somewhere else? It was at this point that decorum departed for sunnier climbs. I gave her both barrels at close range and at high volume. Why don't you fuck off and sit somewhere else if it bothers you so much? You can clearly see that walking around with a severely gashed foot is going to be something of a problem for me. You, on the other hand, seem to be perfectly capable of getting up off your fat ass with minimal effort. If you're that bothered, Fuck off somewhere else, if looks could kill, I would have died on the spot, but I continued to stare her down. At this point, my boss comes back from checking me in. He parks his 6 feet 2 frame in front of her and in a low but menacing voice starts to curse her out, in Russian. Karen goes white and grabbing her son's hand, scurries off to the other side of the waiting room. Shortly thereafter, I get called into a consulting room and 13 stitches and a pint of O plus later I'm sent home to recuperate. Boss took me home and on the way back I asked him what he'd said to the Karen, my mother's recipe for borst. Addendum, Karen's son was in for the removal of a tiny wood splinter in his pinky.